Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture and the ensuing lectures, we're going to start looking at functions and their various characteristics. So, so far we've seen a whole bunch of functions. We saw, uh, you know, linear functions, quadratic functions, polynomials, rationals, uh, square root, cube root, all those kind of functions. And then we saw uh, trigonometric functions, sine and cos alone, sinusoids we saw. And then we saw exponential logarithm. Even before sinusoids, we saw exponentials and logarithms. And we studied a lot of their properties, you know, what happens if you take limits with them, what happens if you do derivatives, integration with them, and how to plot them, how to compute them, how to take inverses of each other. Now, we'll extend that and we'll study all of them together in a very meaningful way uh, because functions are really, really, really important. Everywhere you see, uh, you will you will have a function of one variable or maybe even multiple variables, but at least one variable and you want to model that as an equation, right, an expression for it and you should need, you need a comfort with that. Not only that, we'll go beyond what functions we've studied so far. We'll saw, we'll see the rest of the trigonometric functions, tan, secant, cosecant and all that and then inverse trigonometric function. We saw cos inverse and sine inverse alone. We'll see a lot more of those and in fact derivatives of those inverses and all that, all of that we'll see. And finally, we'll close with uh, what are called hyperbolic functions. So now these are just a sample of the functions out there. You can keep defining any number of functions that you want very easily. We already saw two ways of defining new functions, right? One is power series expansion, gives you new functions. The other is integration. That also gives you new functions when you don't know what's going on. So both of those are very popular, in fact. So you can define a whole bunch of functions uh, any which way you like, but these are very standard functions, trigonometric, inverse trigonometric, and hyperbolic, and they show up quite a bit. So we'll quickly see a review of that. But before that, let's just start with some basic idea about what are the two main problems. The first problem with functions is, suppose f of x is given as an expression in x, you want to be able to compute the function, plot it, understand its behavior, do differentiation, integration, whatever, and compute its inverse. So all of these computations, limits, all of those things you should be able to do. Is it smooth? Is it continuous? All these questions you should be able to answer. That is when f of x is given to you as an expression. This is something you need a lot of practice with that's very, very critical and important. Quite often, you may have to do a reverse, okay? You will only have partial information about a function f that you desire. For instance, you may know the value of the function at some points and you may want to find a good fit for f. And depending on the shape of those points, maybe it falls exponentially, maybe it's periodic, maybe it's linear, maybe it's quadratic. So depending on the shape of the points, you may have to visualize a function and find a good fit for the function. So it is sort of like the opposite. How do you come up with a function given some behavior? And also you may have some expected behavior, you know, I'll show you a clear example. So you may want a function which has a certain behavior and you may want to use that function in some algorithm or some method that you may have. So in that case, you have to come up with a function. So if, a, if you're given as an expression, how to understand it? If you don't have an expression, you only have some required behavior or properties, how do you create a function? Both of these are very, very useful and you should have a good handle on them. So the way to do it is to study a whole bunch of functions, different functions of different types, all of them, and eventually get enough experience so that when you have to cook up a function, you can cook it up very, very nicely. Let me show you an example. A very popular function these days is called the sigmoid function. It's used in learning algorithms a lot, and it has a lot of wonderful properties. So if you look at the requirements for the sigma function, sigmoid function, these are the sort of requirements. First thing is we want it to be very smooth, infinitely differentiable everywhere, right? So there's a good reason for it. You'll see why, because it's used in some optimization algorithms. You may remember maximization, minimization involves differentiation and all that, and you want the differentiation to exist, derivatives to exist. So you want it to be very smooth. Not only that, you want it to be zero at minus infinity. When x tends to minus infinity, it should start at zero, and it should be monotonically increasing, and it should end up at one, and when x is infinity, okay? And it has to be smooth and nice and differentiable, and uh, it has to have that behavior. So it seems like this, you know, how do you cook up a function? So roughly, if you see the plot, I want the plot like this, right? So here is uh, x-axis, is y-axis. It starts at zero at minus infinity and smooth, nice shape. It goes all the way there. So this is what I really want. It turns out here is a good formula for it, okay? So this is the famous, famous sigmoid function, one by one plus e power minus x. Would you have been able to cook up this function if only these descriptions are given? I'm not sure if you can do it, then you've already learned a lot about these exponential function. Notice what this e power minus x is going to do, right? So this e power minus x is very, very crucial here. Because if an x goes very large negative, this e power minus x will blow up. So this whole expression will tend to zero. And because I have e power minus x and one by one plus, I don't have to worry about being smooth and all that. It's infinitely differentiable everywhere, nowhere it's going to go off to zero, right? There's no problem here anywhere. So it's very, very smooth and nice and differentiable. And what about when x becomes very, very large? When x becomes very large, I put this one by one plus, 
and this goes to 0 but this goes to 1 okay and it's monotonically increasing why because you know e power minus x from minus infinity to plus infinity is monotonically uh, decreasing so this 1 by 1 plus will be monotonically increasing so how notice how uh, this function this e power minus x in combination with in a rational form has given you all the properties that you want okay so hopefully you see examples like this there'll be many examples like this where you will see there'll be a function that's given to you to fit a data and then people would have used this kind of intuition and the need for a smoothness and etc to fit a certain function to it okay so do you get you can get there but then you need to know a lot of these properties of these functions so you see how these things come together you can read up about the sigmoid function on the internet it's very very popular it's it's part of deep neural networks and all of those things okay so hopefully i've given you a bit of a handle on how uh, these kind of understanding of functions and their characteristics is very very useful okay so we're going to start with some very simple examples the first simple examples we've seen so far are linear quadratic polynomial rational functions rational we'll study in a little bit more detail because we didn't really study some aspects of rational but linear quadratic polynomial we've seen already so i'm going to go through it really very fast and just show you what behavior we expect okay so this is uh, linear I'm, I'm just showing you an animation here where i've just varied a and b okay so you see when a and b are varied this y equals ax plus b will go through all possible angles and all that and you see so it just goes over and over again so let me just stop this at some point it doesn't matter where i stop it so this is one line so y equals ax plus b is a line uh, linear relationships are very very commonly used as input output models in engineering systems x is input y is output and a b will come from the system parameters y is ax plus b it's very very common to approximate uh, input output relations with uh, linear uh, functions so linear functions will show up a lot also physical quantities many physical quantities that you define you define so that there is a linear relationship right so you measure some things whatever you measure they may have a linear relationship and that's very nice you define some quantities around them force and acceleration pressure and temperature for instance inside a you know for a standard uh, volume uh, all of these things are uh, are have linear relationships okay so some nice uh, properties of linear there is if you take two points there is a unique line through them uh, so linear fit is also very very common in data analysis so these are very very popular functions but simple function we've studied this in great detail we are not going to see uh, too much in detail here okay so the next type of function is a quadratic function so once again i have an animation here which shows all the possible shapes that these quadratic functions uh, can take i think this exhausts pretty much every shape it can take it can either be this way below the uh, below the x-axis it can cut the x-axis in two places one place and then it can shift around this way it can, depending all this depends on the coefficients i keep changing the coefficients to get this okay so let me stop somewhere here so this is for one particular value of the coefficients you can do these animations quite easily in desmos and do that now quadratic relationships are also very common in science and engineering in, in electronic systems for instance uh, if you if you look at cmos transistors uh, the current versus voltage is modeled as quadratic in some uh, regions and that's uh, that's a very very popular and very useful model so quadratic equation model can be a quadratic function model can be used uh, quite often in science and engineering a distance versus time of free fall for instance is also that's so quadratic shows up uh, very naturally so in fact just like two points have a line three points will have a unique quadratic okay so you can think about why that is true three points will have a unique quadratic usually and so that uh, results in something called quadratic spline interpolation so quite often a lot of data points are interpolated quadratic spline and to get a very smooth uh, look smooth looking shape it's not really smooth but smooth looking shape you can get okay so this is quadratic now if you go to polynomials things become a little bit more complicated so here is a polynomial I've, I've taken a specific form for the polynomial and i varied the coefficients around it so you see the polynomial when uh, it has many roots it, it has this nice sort of behavior and this is a fifth degree polynomial illustration in general it has you know it can have degree n and let me just let it play for a little while because you see the polynomials are smooth but then uh, they're going to go multiple times up and down you know that's not the only behavior in fact depending on how the roots are it can have very different type of behavior for x very low it's going off to minus infinity x very high is going off to plus infinity i think that's because of how i chose the coefficients and all that it can be the other way around also can have all sorts of uh, interesting behaviors depending on how the roots behave okay so you can't be sure about all that so maybe i should stop it here at this point so this is maybe a typical so you can see it cuts the x axis at five points so i i've, I've fixed so that I, i'll get five real roots here so that's why you're getting this uh, so 
now now polynomials are also extremely popular used a lot in data fitting and uh, in science and engineering in, in filter design and electronic systems in particular uh, we use uh, Chebyshev polynomial filters for example there are many other polynomial elliptic polynomials this that all of them are used uh, to get a particular ripple and shape and all that it's, it's a very interesting area uh, hopefully you'll get to see it and polynomial fit is also very important in general data analysis and modeling so if you have a general piece of data a uh, lot relationship and it may have a polynomial fit and it might be a good uh, place to start okay so polynomial functions are very very common so now all, what is nice about linear quadratic polynomial in fact all of them are polynomials right and there's no there's no complicated thing about them right it is very easy functions uh, to write down to differentiate integrate all of that are very very easy okay so these are very simple uh, easy functions uh, the next type of function we'll move to is a rational function. So rational functions need a little bit of study. We'll study that in more detail in the next module. Okay, so up to here, we've done linear quadratic polynomial. Uh, hopefully you are comfortable enough with this. Uh, the only thing that's complicated about polynomials is roots when you go to higher uh, degrees. And anyway, we saw uh, uh, you know, numerical tools for computing uh, roots and fundamental theorem of algebra, which guarantees complex roots. We can use complex arithmetic to simplify some of the work. Okay, so we're gonna use that and study more about rational functions in ensuing lectures. Hope this was simple and easy. Uh, let's begin our study of functions and their characteristics uh, from the next module onwards. Thank you.